Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to talk about kick fills. Uh, somebody requested I took a look at them and uh, some of the interesting things you can do there. Um, I'm also going to look in uh, to how you can transition into them. Um, uh, maybe at like the end of 16 or 8 bars or even 32 bars. Um, you want to have a little feel to kind of reset the listener and um, um, make them able to catch the anchor point again, um, which is helpful when you're actually in the club dancing um, so that everybody, you know, is on the same line of, of where um, everything is happening in the track. Um, so with that being said, if you have another request you would like me to do uh, something like this, uh, then leave them in the comments. And uh, for now, let's get right into it. Okay, so the track I was requested to take a look at is um, Fractal Funk by uh, Fungus Funk and Asioma. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want uh, a listen, but uh, I have a little piece of it here. And um, we're specifically going to look at uh, the kick fill that kind of happens here. Uh, this is more of a transition part uh, with a filter. Um, and then this is the actual fill where some interesting stuff happens with the kick. And I also remade the whole thing. So we'll listen and look at um, how it's actually made. And yeah, here's the reference. Okay, so my remake sounds like this. Um, this is only the kick and bass. I didn't bother with any of the synth sounds. Uh, so here it is. not exactly the same um, but uh, it's very very close um, so first of all I wanted to kind of look into how I um, created this fill so obviously I had the reference so um, what I would look at is where the transients were and uh, that kind of thing and that worked fine for most of these uh, for example for this kick you could just place them on the grid where this transient is um, then for the reverse kick what I did is um, I just loaded in a kick and um, made sure that the end lined up with the transient here and then reversed it and um, added a little fade to make it a little bit shorter there um, and that would get me the kick in the right place with the transients lining up um, so if you have a reference of a, a fill that you really like then you can use this technique um, otherwise you can maybe make a rhythm guide if you have a rhythm in mind uh, you can take like a small midi note um, and kind of lay out the rhythm that you want and then build it around there with the kicks because that's a little bit easier to edit um, the MIDI and kind of get a feeling for the rhythm than uh, for example with the kicks because um, there's a lot more things you can do with them like the fades that might make it a bit more complicated uh, to work on the rhythm um, so there's a tip you can use um, but then moving on here as you can see still just the kicks lining them up with the transients and then here kind of the same thing happened um, so what I did is I basically uh, put down my first kick and then um, the, the sample was much longer so what I would do is I would just select up until the point where um, the second transient hit, uh, was and then just duplicate it with Control D and um, then for the next one this is, was a little bit shorter so I had to shorten it a little bit and um, doing that process over and over again um, I think originally this was made um, using a MIDI um, and then just um, kind of looping it and making the, the end of the sample a little bit earlier every time. Um, but this way, um, the way I've done it, um, one thing you can do is um, add a little fade to the, the end of each kick. Um, because they're not all the same length as you can see, uh, it's a little bit more harder to do that in MIDI. Um, it can still be done by like shortening the MIDI notes and that kind of thing. Um, but this way it was a lot easier because I could just add the fades uh, and because I already had the rhythm, again, I could just copy the rhythm over with the length of the kick and it would give me a nice kick um, kind of roll there. Um, so that's basically how I did um, the whole glitchy thing with the kick. Um, there's a lot more you can do. For example, you can uh, play with the, the, the transposition. As you can see, all of these are set to minus four. Um, if I select all of them, you can see that they're all set to the same value there. Um, so I didn't do anything with the, the actual key of each kick, um, but that might be interesting to do, um, kind of give you a little bit more build-up potential maybe. Um, but yeah, that's just something you can experiment with. 
Um, now then I wanted to go to the, the filtering. Uh, as you can see, it didn't have any processing on here. And um, the reason I have my kick and bass like this is, um, I've shown this off before, but what you can do is um, where it kind of overlaps with um, the bass of your kick, you can just remove the lowest harmonic from your bass line and it will still sound nice and that layers are not nicer over that bass as there's no bass frequencies uh, colliding. Um, so that's the tip there, which you can use. Um, that's why there's uh, two different bass channels. But the bass isn't really doing anything, it's just playing a pattern, um, except for the last bar where it's just silent. Um, and as you can see, it's the, my, my standard bass patch, with, uh, which I've shown off before. And uh, then a little dynamic uh, equalizer to bring the sub up a little bit. Uh, because this is a bit of a darker track uh, that fitted a bit nicer, having a bit more sub there. Um, the main thing is happening right here uh, in terms of processing. Um, I've shown off this filter rack uh, as well, uh, way, way in the past. But for this occasion, I decided to make a little modification. Um, so not only do we have um, this extra EQ point here, um, which helps kind of boost the low end so that there isn't such a dip when this macro is um, at zero or all the way here. Uh, that helps a lot with the, um, again, maintaining that, that sub bass that we want for the darkness of the track. But also on this macro, we have the resonance of our filter here, which helps make uh, this effect possible. Um, so if we look at um, where it is, and if we also re-enable the uh, automation again, which was like this. Um, if we, oh, it's like this. If we play that, uh, you can see that it's, it goes up and it's, it boosts that frequency a little bit more. Um, so we have that nice uh, feeling we had also here in the track where it sounds like it, there's more resonance. Um, so that's a, just the filtering. It's just a, a high-pass filter going up with that extra resonance. Uh, I also decided to do a little bit of gain staging here that just makes it so that it's a little bit more uniform. Um, just like here in the waveform, it is. Uh, basically, um, throughout the, the whole filter, um, the track stays at the same level. So to, to also have that, um, I also did a little bit of a boost in the, the overall gain. Um, so that's how I made the reference. Again, I'll just let it play here for a bit. And um, yeah, the... the the original sounds like this if you want to hear that again as well. Um, so yeah, what I mainly want you to focus on is how um, the grid is kind of being used. Uh, that's something I didn't really talk about, uh, why this fill actually works. Um, but if we look at it, we, here we have a four on the floor, so every beat there is a kick. Um, so to kind of reset the listener what you would want is you would some would have some anchor points which um, are often uh, the downbeats so that's the first and the third um, those are mo mostly the, the our anchor points where like sounds start and um, where we concentrate on when we're dancing um, so in this particular film what we can see is that the both downbeats here um, have a kick on it and both uh, upbeats do not have um, like a single big kick on it. So that makes these a little bit more prominent and kind of divides it up into two sections here. Um, so that's how that works. You, you can hear that there's a lot of emphasis on these two kicks here. Um, and again, with the transition, what we're doing is we're transitioning up until um, a beat that is um, at the bar length. Um, so that kind of makes sense in terms of the whole structure if we think about the track in like maybe sections of four bars or um, then this is a better like um, division than for example if the transition were uh, up until this point or up until this point. So again that just makes it work and um, is a little bit more logical. Uh, so those are the kind of things that you would want to look out for if you want to make your own kind of rhythm there. Um, but with that being said, that's going to be it for today. Again, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, that's very helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. And um, if you're new here, uh, subscribe. Also, um, 
follow me on Twitch and Discord. Um, I do a lot of streaming on Twitch, um, which is a lot of fun when people come over. And the Discord community really helps bring uh, the whole production community around my channel uh, together a lot more. So if you're not in there, uh, I definitely suggest you join. Um, there you can also get notifications on when I upload videos or when I stream or um, just, you know, have a fun talk with me or the people in my community. Um, so with that being said, that's going to be it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and for now, bye bye.